Examination is a thing of tremendous tension for a student. It is not the worry of being assessed correctly because in that case anyone with a fair degree of preparation need not be worried about it at all. It is the worry of not being examined and graded adequately so that all of one's preparations may prove to be of no use if the examiner disposes of one like torn socks. It does not happen as a routine but you never know what the examiner will be like and in what mood the examiner may be at that time. The examiners follow a set of general pattern of examination rules and regulations but there are no set rules about what should be asked minimum how many questions should be asked what are the criteria for grading the candidates accurately etc. There are no records of the questions asked and the answers given in VIVA. The examiners are at full liberty of asking whatever that strikes their fancy. In other words, the examiners are guards. If one can somehow assume control of the situation, there would be no tension. I propose to teach how to assume control during practical and oral examinations or VIVAs. I want to show how one can face a couple of or even more ferocious or otherwise examiners in a viva with confidence. A person who masters that will be the person who will go to the examination with a light heart and a song on his lips. One has to remember that the examiners give marks more often from their hearts and less often from their brains. What I mean to say is that they may not check exactly how many questions were answered out of a total of so many questions asked to the candidate. And of the unanswered questions, how many were difficult ones? If one has answered a number of questions and not made gross or dangerous mistakes, the marks one gets are based on the examiner's feelings about one. At the end of the viva. Actually, you should be prepared so well that you can answer any question they ask. Unfortunately, that is possible for very few people. They don't need this video. If you are one of those, shut off this video and go do whatever else you need to do. All others may continue to view this video. Remember, this video is no substitute for solid reading and clinical experience. It is meant to help manage the unmanageable, the unknown part of the oral examination or VIVA. The other preparations include first finding out who are the examiners. You need to know someone who works in the university or college office who may tell you this. At least you need to know someone who knows one of these people. You need to know the examiner because then you can know their likes and dislikes and prepare the topics for the VIVA accordingly. After all, the examiner is likely to ask questions on topics next to their heart. You need the examiner to remember your face from having seen you from before the VIVA. The sense of familiarity helps get simpler questions and better marks. The best way to achieve this is to attend the examiner's teaching sessions before the VIVA. Clinics and lectures of the examiner before the VIVA have a 200% attendance, the extra 100% coming from other institutes. It is best that one obtains a seat in the front row at these clinics. One should appear to be alert and attentive. One must not ask stupid questions just to make the examiner take notice of one. One must not answer all questions and appear to be very smart at these times. It should be done during the VIVA. The next step is to find out the names of the supervisors. The supervisors are usually the resident doctors working under the examiner and also his lecturers. 
these are young persons who have recently passed through the experience of being examined and they are sympathetic with the candidates they help if they can on the day before the viva they show the candidates all instruments specimens radiographs drugs and any uh, anything else that may be kept on the viva table this gives one tremendous peace of mind because the fear of the unknown is removed after seeing everything that may be used in the viva the supervisors allot cases for case presentation during viva if the examiner does not insist on drawing lots for allotment of cases the supervisors give whatever cases they want to give they can be sweet talked into giving one the case one has prepared well the leak questions the examiners ask the previous candidates and also the answers the examiners expect from the candidates usually the answers to all the questions are found in the books however sometimes the examiners have their own ideas that are not found in the conventional books this is where the supervisors tips help you need to have a proper personal appearance at the time of the viva you should be dressed soberly but well the apron should be white and pressed the hair should be well combed boys may be tempted not to shave so as to give the impression of having been studying too hard that is not a healthy thing to do that impression should be given by the answers one gives rather than by the suggestion of not finding enough time for a quick shave we will see more about personal appearances later the examiner's nature can be assessed by observing the proceeding of the viva from a distance if loud voices are heard from the room in which the viva is conducted one should start getting ready for a difficult examiner maybe more than one difficult examiner if candidates are seen coming out looking depressed or even crying the examiners can be presumed to be ferocious if the supervisors seem to be running a catering service rather than making arrangements for a smooth running of the viva one or more of the examiners can be presumed to be difficult likely to expect a lot from the candidates just like expecting food and beverages at odd times there is really nothing one can do about such examiners but one is mentally prepared for the worst which is better than finding out during the viva that the examiners are tough usually examiners sit in pairs the purpose may be that one of them can go to sleep they do need rest at times while the other continues with the chore of assessing the student but at the beginning of the viva both examiners are usually awake that is the time to begin to make a good impression the first impression is the best imp impression at least when the encounter is going to last for a short time like in vibats the first thing to remember is that examiners are all human beings and therefore are subject to all maneuvers that human beings are susceptible to after the examiners glance at one if they are mesmerized by one's appearance then what one does and says until the end of the viva will not matter however such happy occurrences are rare so exhibit your good manners by wishing them a good morning you must remember that at well known the morning ends and some examiners do not like students who continue to say good morning past that hour in case you commit that mistake don't correct it unless prompted to do so by the examiner the principle behind that is that one must not draw the examiner's attention to one's own mistakes this applies to the remaining viva too the next issue is whom to wish first 
This question does not arise if there is only one examiner, the other having gone away for any reason. If the examiners are busy talking to each other, one should wait politely until they finish talking and look at one. Wishing them when they are not paying any attention to one does not help. Do not sit down until they ask you to. Before you sit down, thank them for it. If possible, you should sit on the edge of the chair that makes them feel one is nervous and their control is complete. Do not cross one leg over the other. If you are a girl and they want to see the embroidery on the front of your dress, sit in such a way that they can do so. We have a table here which elaborately specifies whom to wish at what time. If both examiners are male, one local and the other external, wish the local examiner first followed by the external examiner. The local fellow can do much more for you than the external examiner will. If both are female examiners, one local and the other external, same principles apply as before. If one is male and one is female, wish the female examiner first and then the male examiner. The male examiner does not mind you giving a preference to the female examiner, though in his mind he is superior to her. He likes to be generous to the weaker sex and makes allowances when they don't affect him much. Two examiners, one of them known to be ferocious, or two examiners, both of them known to be ferocious. Wish the ferocious one first. Look at a point in the middle of the two examiners and about half a meter above their heads and wish both of them together if both examiners are known to be ferocious. It helps if you have thick glasses too. It is quite possible that some of the things you say might appear funny to one or both the examiners. In that case they laugh. If they do, do not get all worked up. It is their privilege to do so. If they feel good, they give you good marks. Just smile sheepishly until they stop laughing. You may say something like, um, I mean, no sir, no madam, not that, no sir, what I meant was, etc. Starter concept. The viva is begun by the examiner with a starter, like they use a gun to start a race. It may be an instrument, a surgical specimen, a medicine, a radiograph or some such thing. It is just to break the ice. You actually have to show your knowledge starting from that point and not details of whatever is offered to you. Saving time. The oral examination is time bound. The time allotted for one viva is usually 10 minutes, which means there will never be a second more than the prescribed 10 minutes unless the supervisor with the bell dozes off. It also means you have 10 minutes or less to tell them all you know and the more time you waste, the less marks you get. So instead of waiting for a question from the examiner, take initiative and start discussing whatever instrument or specimen the examiner points to. If you do not know what it is, look at another one next to it that you are familiar with, pick it up and start discussion. A lethargic examiner and believe me, a few of them remain alert after conducting the FIVA for a couple of days, most of them become lethargic. They will let you continue on the object you selected. They want to discuss subject matter, not the object. So any object will do. But if the examiner makes you put it down and pick up something else that he wanted, apologize and pick up whatever he wants. If you don't know what it is, accept defeat and say so immediately, then he will go to another one. Remember that time is of essence.
remember to put the object back on the table as soon as you tell the examiners what it is remember it is just a starter the examiners are not interested in knowing if you know the physics chemistry dynamics or whatever of the object they want to discuss clinical aspects of the same but if you keep holding on to it they may be tempted to ask about those awful things and you are unlikely to know them in adequate detail another disadvantage of holding on to it is that you are tempted to keep handling the instrument or specimen because this is probably the first time in your life you have got your hands on it the examiners are tense that you may drop and damage it especially if it is breakable like a pathology specimen in a glass jar they can't concentrate on what you say and you lose marks on the other hand if you manage to break it it being quite costly and perhaps rare you are likely to fail in the examination there are some examiners who like to give the choice of the starter to the candidate if the examiner says pick up anything you like and speak on it should you pick something up what you like or should you not you may get worried that it is a trap what if the examiner feels that the object one has chosen to speak on is something one has researched on extensively and one knows everything there is to know about it then the examiner may ask difficult questions on it and floor you well that fear is unnecessary you should always speak whatever you like and start speaking on it rather than say no sir or no ma'am i have prepared everything equally well and you may please give me whatever you like it irritates the examiner who may then proceed to give you the most difficult thing to speak on not selecting a topic to speak on when the examiner asks you to do so is sheer disobedience of the examiner's orders and you must remember that at the time of the examination the examiner is god and if he says jump you jump and if he says fetch you fetch so he says pick something you pick something actually you should prepare a few things very well meant for just such an occasion it is not advisable to prepare only one thing from a given category because if it is not on the table you will look ridiculous if you keep looking for it and you will also lose mark earning time choose things that have specific uses rather than something general which has a host of uses then you are sure that the examiner will ask you questions on a topic you have prepared very well for example choose a myomectomy clamp which is used for myomectomy do not select sponge holding forceps which have more than 20 uses do not select something that has become obsolete after all this is clinical viva not viva on history you will be lucky to pass if you select such a thing because the examiner thinks you do not know that it is obsolete do not choose something that can be dangerous in inexpert hands it will be so advanced and likely to be controversial too that you can never impress the examiner with your knowledge and get good marks remember you have 10 minutes per viva in which you have to answer as many questions as possible to get good marks some time is used up by the examiner which cannot be helped in the remaining time if you are not precise in answering the examiner will spend a lot of time on questions to drag a complete answer from you you lose time and hence marks in that bargain consider this typical viva episode examiner points with his index finger and says what is that you pointing with your own index finger say which one that thing sir examiner says yes the same you say it is a contraceptive sir he says 
what type of contraceptive you say it's an oral contraceptive sir examiner says what type of oral contraceptive is it you ask what type he says yes what type you say oh yes sir it is a combination contraceptive sir he says what is it a combination of you say it's a combination of hormones sir now by this time examiner is exasperated he says which hormones you say estrogen and progesterone sir this can continue until the end of the viva and the examiner will probably fail you because you have answered just one question in 10 minutes and also because you have irritated the examiner by making him work so much to extract the answer from you rather you should use the elaboration technique once your answer to the point the examiner has asked is complete do not stop for the next question continue smoothly to give details of the thing that is under discussion usually the examiners are tired of the whole thing and are content to sit back and listen while you give exhaustive information if the examiner is irritated by your approach and stops you stop no harm in trying the technique because it gives rich dividends if it works another way of wasting one's own answering time is to repeat the examiner's question before actually answering it listen to this example examiner says what are the complications of waiting and observing a gravida with obstructed labor and fetal distress instead of giving her definitive treatment candidate says the complications of waiting and observing a gravida with obstructed labor and fetal distress instead of giving her definitive treatment are and blah 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 so on save the time wasted as you do not get any marks for starting the whole question again another thing to avoid in a viva is to seek approval from the examiner you should not behave like a child who is learning to walk and seeks approval from its mama after every tentative step if the examiner asks a question you should give the answer you believe to be the right answer if the examiner approves he gives good marks if he does not approve he doesn't give good marks but if you decide to play it safe and break up the answer into multiple segments and seek only one segment at a time and seek approval for the same before proceeding to the next segment you will not get good marks speaking effectively is important the technique of speaking in a viva is somewhat different from that which one uses at all other times it is important because there is much more at stake than just letting others know what one thinks your speech should be easily audible but not audible at the place in the same examination hall where another viva is going on you may be tempted to speak softly when you do not know the answer to the question asked hoping that the examiner may not hear you well and give marks thinking that you have answered it correctly unfortunately examiners do not oblige they know this trick the same rule applies to clarity of speech what the slide shows is musical notes i don't mean to say you use musical notes but don't use mumbling mumbling does not lead anywhere except to poor marks you may try and put on a fancy accent hoping that the examiner may not get exactly what you said and may give you marks rather than show his inability to understand the accent that is not so examiners have a strong feeling against local persons having foreign accents without good reason and there cannot be any good reason even if 
you have developed an accent as a preparation for going abroad after qualification this is not the time or the place for letting the examiners know your intention they may look upon that rather unkindly we have seen before that one has to use one's time efficiently so that you get more marks that idea may tempt you to speak faster than usual and say more number of things in a given time if one is so fast that the examiner cannot even pick up words but even if the examiner can pick up words will not be able to make out the general meaning of what you say they do not give you marks for that performance some of them feel that the candidate has learned everything by heart and is saying it out without really having understood it some other examiners may feel that the ex candidate is trying to pull a fast one on them for either of these reasons you lose marks you should really have easy manner of speech like having a conversation like a clinician is speaking to another clinician the examiner subconsciously accepts that as speech from a sound future colleague and gives you appropriately better marks some teachers have a habit of telling the students the number of points in an answer for example the number of complications of so and so disease is 12 and these complications are as follows it is good for teaching and impressing students but not in viva the examiner may count the number of complications you recite and if you cannot reach the number 12 they will not let you go until you do or accept defeat defeat implies losing marks some other examiner will say there are 15 complications tell me three more then you are stumped using the pronoun you indiscriminately is dangerous actually it is a perfectly acceptable thing as far as grammar is concerned the examiner or teacher can use it as he likes when he is teaching students or taking vivas but not the other way round if the examiner asks complications of an operation say vaginal hysterectomy you may not say sir you could cause hemorrhage infection and if you are not careful injury to the urinary bladder and after that if you don't treat well vesico vaginal fistula that may make the examiner uncomfortable or angry it is possible that it reminds him of such occurrences from his past the result is you getting less marks it is always better to say one may injure the urinary bladder one may cause hemorrhage one may cause infection etc if one belongs to the thorough category you can afford to say everything related to the topic being discussed without any fear of what the examiner may ask unfortunately that is possible for few persons only and others need help one usually knows a few things about the topic being discussed very well a few things moderately well and a few things not at all if one is in terrible luck it may go to things that one does not know at all this must be avoided at all costs rather than just praying that it should not happen this is achieved by an act of omission if one uh, is aware that a certain thing is dangerous one should omit to mention it in the course of discussion if the examiner does not notice that you have missed it all is well on the other hand if he does ask one about it you should say oh i am sorry sir or ma'am i just forgot to say that it must have happened because of the tension of the examination ma'am if one is a practical one should stick out one's tongue and pretend to bite it and then say what i have just said it is more effective that way 
if he lets go so much the better if he insists you answer it you truthfully but sorrowfully say that you do not know it very well and then the examiner will move on to something else we have just seen an act of omission both acts of omission and commission are advanced techniques actually but act of commission is far more advanced than an act of omission an act of commission is a bold step that can be taken only after thorough preparation of selected items the examiners do not like the candidates to speak on uncommon things if one happens to speak on any the examiners are likely to pounce on him and harass him until he cries for mercy they like they like to do such things possibly to teach the candidate not to think of uncommon things or possibly because it's an enjoyable experience for them one has to take advantage of this weakness of the examiners one has to know what are the uncommon things related to the topic under discussion and prepare them very well on the morning of the examination if the topic is discussed in the examination one speaks of the common things first and then the uncommon thing followed by an expectant pause it could be something like vaccination in pregnancy or drugs of recreation used in pregnancy the pause encourages the examiner to ask you on that topic when asked you look afraid and pretend to be taken aback for a moment or two to please the examiner then start answering slowly a little uncertainly gradually become confident and gather momentum and then speak until you have told them all there is in the books on that topic the pause act is important to make them believe that you are genuinely good and that you had not prepared the topic on the same morning you get very good marks if this technique is employed successfully schools of thought when i was a student there used to be two schools of thought about many things the two schools used to be in opposite directions both used to be approved and would be in the standard textbooks about half the population concerned would belong to one school and the other half to the other school well that is medicine for you such schools exist even now in fact now there can be more than two schools of thought sometimes the examiners ask questions that do not have precise answers or perhaps there are precise answers but the examiners believe what used to be correct answers in their day still believe them to be correct though the answers might have changed in such cases when you give an answer that is actually correct by the current textbook standards the examiner may actually frown and say is that really so in that case you should be wise enough not to say it is really so i shall produce a textbook to prove my point shall i you must remember that all arguments with examiners are always lost either primarily when the examiner is actually right and one is wrong or secondarily when one is proved to be right but the examiner gives him less marks because he does not like to lose an argument so you should be diplomatic and say sir there are actually two schools of thought about this some persons believe this and some persons believe that some good clinicians actually believe the other way this pleases the examiner one has called the examiner good indirectly ana is satisfied full marks are often given after this maneuver changing answer is an art you need to be balancing on a tight rope ready to jump either way in the two school business you do not actually change your answer you merely say that both 
you yourself and the examiner are right at the same time maybe the examiner is a little more right than you are however there are situations in which one cannot take that stand the examiner is right and you are wrong in such a situation there are two options available the first is to change the answer one should do a total turn about you should give an answer opposite of that given initially and say that is the right answer that is what you meant just say that that is the standard practice in the hospital where you studied and it was a slip of your tongue under pressure of the examiner examination not non gambit is an advanced game move of conducting viva if one does not know the answer to a specific question one, one may use the not known gambit the choice of words is critical you should not say i don't know this because that does not fetch any marks you should say it is not known in textbooks and journals it means it is not known to anybody or not known to the scientific community in examinations it may mean it is not known only to the candidate but the candidate need not specify to whom it is not known it is quite possible that the correct answer to the question is it is not known in that case the examiner will be quite happy and may proceed to the next question without thinking about it any further if he understands what you are doing accept defeat and admit that you don't know the answer accepting defeat is the last option available to one when one does not know the right answer to the question asked by the examiner or one gives a wrong answer and then the examiner does not permit maneuvers like two schools of thought or changing answer accepting defeat is an art you should do it gracefully if you have been able to answer most of the questions asked by the examiner there is no harm in admitting that you do not know the answer to one question after all no one is perfect you should give a slight smile and say politely sir i don't know the answer to that one that achieves two things the examiner does not waste any time repeating the same question in different ways he proceeds to ask some other question which you can answer and get marks the other achievement of this maneuver is that some examiners are actually pleased by the acceptance of defeat it reassures them that the candidate does not know everything and there is no chance of the candidate being as good as they are it is a subconscious thing but it is there all right if one is thoroughly prepared one can give mathematically precise answers one can say the incidence of so and so disease in india is 0.38% but the examiner may have read a different book and believe it to be 0.56% this is avoided by giving approximately correct mathematical figures if the answer is 38% you should say about 40% you must avoid saying less than 40% because of two reasons this answer does not tell the examiner whether the candidate knows the right answer 38% being less than 40% and 3.8% also being less than 40%. The other reason is that if the examiner's answer is 42%, one's answer is totally wrong because less than 40% rules out 42% as an option. However, if one has said about 40%, one gets full marks. Hints Most examiners are not unkind. Some of them actually want to help the candidates. Such examiners give hints 
to the correct answer when they feel that the candidate may know the answer but is unable to say it out aloud unfortunately they are not always very good at giving hints what they do may appear to be funny gestures if one examiner is found to be pointing at something when he should not be pointing at anything or making some funny gestures which do not seem very appropriate you should realize that a hint is being given if the hint seems more difficult than the original question you should put on your most confused expression so the examiner tries some other method of giving a hint sometimes the examiners do not give hints but the supervisors do that happens when the examiners are ferocious and are troubling all candidates supervisors are persons who have gone through the mental torture of examinations recently and are sympathetic to candidates in trouble such supervisors usually stand or sit at a place where the candidate can see them but the examiners cannot without turning around or going around a corner hints coming from such supervisors are more direct and hence easier to interpret if they nod yes 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 the answer is positive if they shake the head strongly the answer is negative if they move and extended index finger across their throat it means the patient will die from whatever the examiner is saying is happening examiners do not give misleading or wrong hints but the supervisors may do so if the candidate is a girl who has rejected his advances in the past or the supervisor may mean well but his knowledge may be faulty you have to accept the supervisor's hints with a pinch of salt unless you know the supervisor very well leading examiners is an art it is not necessary that the examiners should always decide what questions should be asked as long as they believe that they ask the questions of their own free will all is well the advantage of getting the examiners to ask the questions one wants to be asked is tremendous one knows the answers because of prior preparation the examiner is impressed at the candidate's ability to answer questions including odd ones leading examiners will achieve this but it takes some guts the first leading technique is the pause technique it is based on a body language principle related to conversation between two persons when pers one person stops speaking it is a signal for the other one to start speaking so one must give a pause when one wants the examiner to ask a question let us consider the example of discussion on an instrument used for surgery this instrument has 10 uses if the examiner asks the uses of this instrument one may be tempted to show off by rattling off all 10 uses in one breath and then pause the examiner will most probably ask a question on the last use mentioned and usually the last use in the list is the least common one so give a pause after you have told the use you have prepared in advance if the examiner does not fall for it tell two more and try the pause technique again it works some of my own students have used it on me after i had taught them this and it worked believe me the elaboration technique is also based on a principle of body language related to conversation between two persons when one person is speaking it is considered bad manners to interpret interrupt so the other person waits for the first one to finish when the first one gives a pause the other one takes over in the elaboration technique 
one continues to speak in detail about one aspect of the topic under discussion rather than continue to enumerate all aspects as asked by the examiner to continue our example of the instrument one should elaborate on the seventh use of the instrument when the examiner stubbornly refuses to ask questions after gi giving two inviting pauses if the examiners do not like this elaboration by the candidate they declare in no uncertain terms that he should continue to enumerate the uses as asked rather than elaborate on one one should then politely say sorry and continue to do what the examiners have asked him to do nothing is lost by trying even if the attempt fails the stalling gambit is useful when one wants to avoid discussion on some instrument specimen or drug that you have not prepared well the examiners usually sit well back in their chairs as comfortably as the chairs allow from that position one of them points at some instrument and says take that and tell us all about it if one doesn't like that instrument one should coolly pick up the instrument right next to it and start telling them all about it chances are that the examiner will not object he may feel too lethargic to say no not that one i want you to take the one next to it if he does say that you should proceed to put that down and pick up the instrument on the other side of the instrument pointed out by the examiner most probably the examiner will give up and let you one speak on whatever one has picked up if he insists no the one in between the two you have selected then well you have no choice you accept the fate and speak on that one disputes there should not be any disputes in viva the examiners are gods in total control of the situation one does not displease god when one wants to get good marks from the god when one sits on the wrong side of the viva table one has no rights one is wrong even when one is right so it is better than one does not make any statements that may lead to a dispute if they raise their eyebrows and say is that really so you should immediately go on the defensive and adopt tactics which we have discussed before under schools of thought changing answers and ans accepting defeat for those heroic candidates there is still the option of quoting the source where they came across the information that they have just provided the examiners with one should always begin i may be wrong sir but i read it in so and so book or so and so journal if it's a masters viva in such cases you need to know the source of your knowledge precisely and it better be good if you reach the stage when you show the said statement to the examiner in the source book you have probably lost the battle it is best to say you have the book at home and not in the examination hall anyway always select books by foreign authors not because they are better but because the examiner is more likely to tolerate a foreign author than an author from their own country it's a psychological thing if you are the scholarly type you make code journal articles never say in your own clinical experience it was this way if at all say in your hospital it was the way and it gave good results examiners do not look very kindly upon students with experience weapons well an examination is like a subtle war you must always maintain your composure and cool you must not wince even if hit below the belt by the examiner and if you must wince do it with a smile that pleases the examiner we have to have effective weapons to win this war 
don't think of conventional weapons of harming others there are special weapons to be used in examination i must admit that girls have an advantage over boys while using these weapons they have a large number of weapons that can be used on male examiners their victims are more likely to succumb to the use of weapons when the examiners are male as compared to they are female the first weapon a girl can use is a smile smiling costs nothing but the gains are tremendous a smile must appear to be genuine and not artificial even if it is artificial this can be achieved by practicing in front of a mirror at times when one is not busy studying for the examination a good smile makes the examiner feel that the candidate likes him everyone likes to be liked it gives the impression that the candidate is relaxed and the examiner subconsciously makes up his mind that the candidate is well prepared after all one who is not well prepared would not be so relaxed the examiner finds it difficult to be ferocious to a nice little thing that has smiled at him so sweetly the only thing he can do then is smile and be nice to the candidate and give good marks one should smile periodically during the viva and also at the end the interval smiles reassure the examiner that the candidate still likes him and also prevents him from asking too difficult questions the smile at the end will prompt the examiner to give better marks than they would have given based only on the basis of the questions answered The second weapon a girl can use is the distress weapon. No gallant examiner can watch a girl in distress if one does not know the answer to a question and the examiner seems to be unwilling to let it go at that one should act distressed. Putting a handkerchief to the eyes covering the eyes effectively implies one is crying even when the tears are not noticed by the examiner. if the examiner offers you his clean handkerchief from his breast pocket understand that you have won the war a distress weapon is good for gaining sympathy and passing marks it is not recommended for those who are aspiring to get good marks a third weapon a girl can use is the charm weapon the makeup has to be sober enough so that one looks terribly attractive and still the examiner does not realize that one has put on some or a lot of makeup he must feel that one is naturally beautiful and one does not need makeup one should choose to dress very carefully too the dress should cover all parts but still reveal their presence with sufficient force so that the examiner notices the presence and gets the feeling that one has tried to conceal everything that modesty demands one should conceal at the same time one must exude the air of one blissfully unaware of what the examiner is thinking it is obligatory that one wears a white apron at the time of the examination but one is not obliged to actually button it up right up to the neck buttoning up only the lower end of the apron should do before going to a female examiner as seen on the right side here the girl candidate should tie up her hair in an ugly bun or a pony button up the apron right to the neck put on zero number glasses if one does not have prescription glasses and put on a morose expression the trick is to look as unattractive as possible so that the female examiner does not feel inferior in looks and is not threatened psychologically it may sound funny but believe me it works 
a male female examiner combination is bad luck one has to get marks only on merit there if a male candidate shaves the mustache off ruffles up his hair a bit and draws it forward over the forehead in an unruly manner and combines this with mother's innocent boy look the woman examiner may fall for it this is the type of son or brother they always wanted and probably never had because such types exist only in novels and movies but they love the idea and give extra marks for the same remember that psychological weapons do not work on female examiners well suggestion tool this is another tool that may be possibly used with tact if the examiners are impressed by the candidate's appearance and say very good what would you like to be after internship one can use this tool one should smile and say sir or ma'am if i get good marks in this subject i would like to do post graduation in this same subject the hint is plain and simple then one is saying if the examiner gives one good marks one will become a resident in the examiner's department perhaps in the examiner's unit he likes the idea he is sure to give you good marks assuming that one has answered questions reasonably well the marks one gets from the examiners depend on their feelings about one at the end of the viva this table highlights the importance of handling the examiners with tender loving care and diplomacy if the examiners feelings about one are anger one fails the feelings are neither unpleasant nor pleasant sort of neutral the candidate passes the feelings are pleasant good marks if the feelings are happy very good marks and if the feelings are of ecstasy gold medal one must not get the impression that a viva is to be managed only by adopting various maneuvers these maneuvers are merely aids to one when his own method of facing the examiner may not be very good it these maneuvers always have to be backed by profound knowledge acquired by extensive reading and clinical experience all maneuvers described may not work on all examiners in fact some of them may backfire in that case one is expected to put one's wit to good use and get out of the situation one is welcome to develop one's own maneuvers based on some other school of psychology however i recommend that any such maneuvers should be first tried out in smaller exams before being put to use in a viva of the final exam anyway you have to use these maneuvers at your own risk and the author does not give any warranty or guarantee of success wishing you happy marks earning and all the best